Welcome to the NEPrepZone.com podcast. I'm Stu Pospisil, Mike Patterson, uh, always alongside me, and uh, it's time to do some state tourney picks on the boys' side. Right, girls' state tournament uh, was awesome last week. We're expecting more of the same this week with the boys' tournament. Well, and I'm hoping I can come close to your four correct predictions. I, I, I think I've got a maybe 50-50 shot here. Uh, we got uh, some real competitive classes and a couple where um, it um, you got some prohibitive favorites. Mm -hmm. It looks like on paper, but we've I had um, old uh, a uh, friend of mine from Omaha Northwest back in uh, 1979 say, well, can North Star do what we did and knock off number one and go all the way to the title? You never know. You never know, and uh, I ended up with four winners last week, Stu, so we'll see if you can get to that number. We'll, uh, we'll see how the tourney plays out. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the sheet here. I mean, I've got three number one teams that I'm thinking, okay, if it doesn't go quite right, number eight's gonna take them out in the first round. And that's, as a prognosticator, that's kind of a scary <laughs> thought, but it also shows how this tourney could be something special. Odd things can happen at state, we all know that. Coaches always say, <clears throat> if we just get there, we've got a shot. So, but like you said, having said that, there are a couple of prohibitive favorites this season and we'll get to them eventually. So, well, I think we'll take this from the bottom up, starting with uh, D2. Uh, why not's the top seed? Uh, Lincoln Parkview Christian is the defending champion and number one in uh, my pre tournament rankings. And I think that uh, Parkview uh, certainly has the material uh, and the scoring to, to take it all the way for a repeat title. But they're going to have to get past uh, Fall State Sacred Heart in the first game. Doug Goltz. Always masterful preparer, has a week to prepare for Parkview this time. I just don't know if, if Sacred Heart's uh, talent level is going to match that of, of Parkview. So I'm, that's, that's why I'm going with Parkview all the way. I remember them last year, very uh, athletic team. Um, you mentioned Why Not and Fall City Sacred Heart, the two teams that met in the Class of D2 girls final. So says a lot about those programs to keep getting back to state, not just boys, but girls also. Special team in there in the field this time, Santee. Uh, the school opened in 1977 as a tribal high school. They had had a training school before that. I, I profiled the, the team's rise earlier uh, this season. They made it to state, um, survived an overtime game against Mullen where um, First three possessions over time, the Warriors didn't get the ball past half court. Mullen, to their chagrin, uh, the, the Broncos only made one of their first six three throws, and then uh, Santee took over. Uh, they're at State, they're playing uh, Shelton at uh, six o'clock on Thursday night at uh, the Devaney Center. I'll be there for that one, uh, leaving the friendly confines of PBA. and. Uh, See what happens. Uh, Santee's the highest scoring team in the state uh, hmm. by average. So it uh, could Shelton slow them down. Uh, Shelton was there last year. Santee, as previously said, not. Mm -hmm. So we'll, what will the tournament jitters be like? And you know, I think that they're Santee could be a sleeper, but they go against uh, Parkview the next round. So. That lack of state tournament experience is always the X factor because you just never know if the bright lights might get to them or I've seen it before where teams go in with nothing to lose and they, they really play loose and that can uh, lead to problems for the more favored team. So we'll see how that D2 bracket plays Certainly. out. D1, another uh, defending champion coming back and top seeded, top ranked North Platte St. Patrick's. Uh, they played Meade in the first round. Um, on uh, first game of the day on, on Wednesday against, uh, um, or at uh, Pankle Bank Arena. It's, I, I think that's a tough matchup for the Irish. Uh, Brecken Erickson is the Irish's leader in, in points and rebounds. Uh, Meade probably has played better competition week in and week out. I, I could see that going either way, but uh, that said, I've got St. Patrick's uh, repeating as champion. Uh, coming through the lower bracket, I'm, I'm looking at uh, Johnson Brock. Mm -hmm. 
I hear good things about that Mead coaching staff, by the way. But boy, well, I hear there's a crafty one, the, the semi-retired, that's helping them out. I've heard that That'd too. That'd be Rod Hinkle, former UTAN coach and former uh, stringer for the World Herald. It's tough to go against a team uh, called the Irish with St. Patrick's Day looming just ahead. And I remember St. Pat's last year, and I, I seem to remember a guy who was dressed in green from head to toe last year right in front of that St. Patrick's student section. I went up and asked him you know, who he was. Uh -huh. He was the athletic director. I asked him what his name was. His last name was Irish. <laughs> I said, you're kidding, right? He said, no, I didn't even have it legally changed. That's what it was. So He has a son or a relative on the team. I, I looked at the roster today. I'm going, oh, that rings a bell. And, yeah. You know, Sacred Heart, Irish also, as well. So we mm -hmm. have a couple Irish teams a week ahead of the big day for the Aaron Go Brock crowd. That's right. But, you know, looking at the rest of that bracket, you mentioned Johnson Brock, and I think you've got them going to the final and getting beat by St. Pat's. I remember St. Pat's last year being very solid. and. Mm -hmm. uh, We'll see if they can repeat. Class C2, another one like D1 where I think it's a really balanced field. The semis could be tremendous. Um, Freeman's the number one seed. I have Harrington Cedar Catholic though, number one, playing a great schedule out of the Mid-State Conference. Uh, just four losses. Um, Freeman has one. Um, and they avenged that, that uh, Tri-County, uh, which uh, defeated the Falcons, uh, is on the other side of the bracket. Amherst and Donovan Trumbull are on the bottom half of the bracket. Amherst beat Donovan Trumbull in the uh, sub-district finals. Both went on to um, get district uh, championships and state berths. There I'm looking at a Cedar Catholic um, win over Amherst in the final, but I think any of the four teams that make the semis has a legitimate shot. Thanks, Cedar Catholic playing up in northeast Nebraska. They play great basketball up there. The C2 bracket isn't quite as northeast Nebraska heavy as the girls' bracket no, was. It was six of the eight. <laughs> yeah, six of the eight. But uh, having said that, Harding Hardington Cedar Catholic, another great season. And, uh, you know, what are they seated here? Number, They're four. Number four, but uh, wouldn't surprise me to see them come away with the title. Yeah, like I said, those are potentially two very good semifinals. That would be Freeman and Cedar and Amherst and Donoff and Trumbull in a rematch there. So yeah. that'll be uh, two games to watch. Uh, on to C1. Jeez, Mike. And you're going to see this game on, on Wednesday. Number one, Wahoo, high scoring. Number eight, Auburn, low scoring. Where will they meet in the middle? Somewhere in the middle, you know, Kevin Chief will want to speed up the game as Wahoo's coach. We know what Jim Weeks' strategy will be at Auburn. He's always wanting to play uh, the ball control. But, uh, boy, two veteran coaches. Um, I'm sure the wheels will be turning on both those benches. But, uh, you know, Wahoo is having a great season. And I think, um, and you'll talk about them a little more, the Warriors really loom as the favorite in this C1 bracket. They do. They, they've beaten a lot of Class B teams, although I think Class B is down from where it's been. But, um, you know, Auburn put up 44 points in the first half last week in the district final against Lincoln Lutheran, and Lutheran had beaten them 54-52 just a couple weeks earlier. So hmm. we saw Jim at the state tourney last week. Uh, his son was coaching Beatrice and kind of razzing him a little bit because he says, well, we used to score that Beatrice. Well, yeah, that was 30. <laughs> years ago so but you know what it Wahoo also lost in the first round last year for Calhoun remember the the pioneers had broken a 99 year state tournament drought mm -hmm. and got to the semis so Wahoo knows they can't take that number eight seed for granted and especially when it's Auburn who had won three titles they're actually going for their fifth straight finals appearance be tough for them mm -hmm. to do but if they knock them off um, you know, that's very possible that winner could be in, in the state final. Uh, your other uh, first round pairings, Pierce with Ben Bramer, the Iowa State football uh, signee against Omaha Concordia and the tallest player in the state in uh, uh, Quintia, or Quentin McCafferty. I guess that's how you say it. McCafferty for sure from uh, Omaha Concordia, 6'10", averaging 10.8 rebounds. Uh, per game at about 16 points. Um, 
He was about the only regular, uh, maybe one other, from last year's uh, state tournament team for the Mustangs who are making their third straight appearance. Um, I, I've got Pierce, um, but again, that's going to be a very low scoring game if Pierce has its way because they're allowing just about the same amount as, as Auburn is. Then you got another high scoring team, Ogallala, coming out of the West. Central City, first time at stake since 1947. Wow, hard to believe. They got a new gym open this year. Maybe that was the, the good luck charm to get them over the top. But uh, yeah, the Bison at State for the first time since 47. And then defending champion Ashland Greenwood uh, taking on the Sydney Red Raiders coming from the West in the, in the fourth game at uh, Devaney on Wednesday. And when it's said and done, I think we have a Wahoo Ogallala final. That could be a really fun game. That could be very high scoring and it would be 31 years, too, since Ogallala snapped Wahoo's still state record, might not ever be touched, 114-game winning streak in the semifinals, and then Lincoln Pius got Ogallala in the final. Wasn't it Ogallala that snuck in that title against South Sioux City in the uh, girls' tournament? That was 99. Yeah. They uh, just have a way of upsetting the apple cart. Uh, I think I went through Ogallala. Or 99, yeah. I think I went through Ogallala on my way to Bridgeport when I was... Mm -hmm. uh, Stop right, at French Street? Writing a... Um, no, should I have? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if it's open this time of year, but uh, no, that's why Ogallala's tourist attractions along with uh, the lake and uh, yeah, you gotta go see God's Country okay. uh, with I'll, the Bridgeport trip. I'll remember that for next time. Yep. But uh, You yeah, saw Ole's though. Yes, Ole's and Paxton. You mentioned Pierce too, if I remember right. They went on a run during the football playoffs. They and did. Took home that football title. I know they'd like to make it uh, two in a row. Concordia's back again. Ashland Greenwood, you mentioned them. Yep. So uh, a lot of familiar names in that C1 bracket, but uh, we'll see if Kevin Sheaf's Warriors can uh, can finish off the season. They're the top seed, and mm -hmm. um, like I said, Loom is probably a little bit of a favorite there. Four teams going for the football basketball sweep this year. Bennington, Pierce, Norfolk Catholic, and Parkview. Wow, that's, uh, that's a high number. That is a high number with Parkview and six man. Uh, that was a really feather in, in the Patriots cap down there. Uh, on to class B, where I think that uh, everybody's trying to, to be there in the final on the other side of the bracket away from Omaha Scott. Uh, Skyhawks have not lost in class B until the sub-district final with, ben, er, with Elkhorn. So is there a little chink in the in the Skyhawks' armor? Well, if you remember, remember last year, Ron Colley beat Scott in districts, and I thought, well, they either just ticked him off or proved that they could beat him, and the Crimson Pride went on to win the state title, so. Well, look what the semifinal could be. It could be Omaha Scott against Elkhorn, but Crete also has a score to settle with Elkhorn. Crete was rolling until they kind of hit a wall with Elkhorn, Cardinals recovered under Tony Siski, who's uh, done nice jobs with Scott's Bluff, and then Norfolk, state title up there, now at Crete. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I don't think the Antlers can necessarily chalk that first round up as a win either. But, uh, and, and Scott takes on Bennington in the opener in, in that uh, class on Thursday at Pinnacle Bank Arena. Right. And Scott's beaten Bennington already, but. Uh, you know, Scott looked like they had played better in the district finals, so. Yeah, I think so. The Skyhawks, um, you know, always loom as a tough team. They were the favorite last year and were defeated, so they have that added incentive this year, so. Well, they're so tall as well, plus they have J.J. Farron at guard, and when he's hot, uh, you know, I've, I've seen him drain six or seven threes in a game, and that, that sharp shooting might be necessary. In this game, on the bottom half of the bracket, Platteview, Connor Milliken, uh, Class B's all-time leading scorer, number two all-time in the state. Should he get to the final, he'd uh, probably be over 2,600 points in his career, trailing only the recently passed away Bill Holliday. Um, mm -hmm. Bill lived to see that his record, which uh, he said he didn't know for about 15 years, was even a record. <laughs> um, because nobody kept state records until Condi Sargent kept, it came along with, with Jerry Mathers. Um, he's going to try and take the Platteview to the state final. Um, two years ago, they went to state. Last year, they won a game. 
This year they're trying to win at least two games and, and get to the first state final. They're playing a Norris team that you saw uh, at Roncalli. Uh, mm -hmm. Was it McCoy? What? Uh, McCoy Folkert, yes. I believe it yes, was. Yes, freshman. Freshman guard calmly came in, knocked down a huge three-pointer right at the buzzer, tore the heart out of uh, Roncalli alums everywhere, but props to Norris for getting to state Jimmy Motes. Uh, I mean, Jimmy was not calm after that one. <laughs> no, he wasn't calm. He, uh, he was celebrating like pretty much any coach might have celebrated. Yeah, well, on, you a, know? on a shot by a freshman who yeah. I think had about 36 points all season before that. Right. He uh, was happily running around the court. <laughs> A little but, Jimmy uh, V like. It, it was a little yeah. Malvano. Yeah, it was. And uh, like I said, um, props to that freshman for hitting that shot. Um, and that was at Ron Colley. So the defending champion won't be back in Class B. But uh, boy, they got a big test against Platteview in that first round. And, um, you know, you mentioned on the other side of the bracket, Scott still. Yep. And then you got Scott's Bluff and York. Uh, York's had a good season, uh, three double digit scorer, Scott's Bluff. Um, maybe not one of their uh, top shelf seasons, but enough to get to state. And I think it's a decent matchup. I think that's a, a potential toss-up game down there. And Scott Spleff just had his girls at state last week. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, props to the Bearcats for getting both uh, schools there. York also was at state uh, last week. So. We'll see how that first rounder goes. That's, that's 15 schools uh, that sent boys and girls to the state tourney. Mm -hmm. And another school that did that as we go into the Class A uh, preview, Bellevue West. Undefeated, uh, almost touched. Uh, Omaha West side uh, had a good game plan against them in the regular season finale. Uh, knee it overtime, uh, but uh, the Thunderbirds held on to their undefeated record. Is that the close call that uh, is going to propel them, or what, do, what does it show as they uh, come into the state uh, tournament? Well, it might give those other teams some hope, Stu, but uh, on the downside, I'm sure Bellevue West coach Doug Woodard has, has looked at film of that game, and he's learned from it, and he's going to teach his players um, something from that close call, too. So T-Bird's definitely uh, sitting as the prohibitive favorite in Class A. Another factor, Josiah Dotzler, the Creighton uh, bound guard, uh, hurt his ankle during districts and they've been working diligently on him. When I saw Doug Woodard last week at the girls' turn, he said it's gained better by the day. Hmm. But you know how, yeah, I mean, we, we saw Britt Prince, I mean, you've got to, and we've seen some ankle injuries, Ed Chang a few years ago with Papillion in the uh, semifinal. He barely got through the uh, state final and they lost uh, that game. And then um, uh, Hunter Salas as a junior was not full strength in the final against uh, Miller North or against uh, Bellevue West. And mm -hmm. uh, they, that was the epic comeback by Bellevue West. The other X factor injuries, and this is probably a nice time to mention the uh, job that the training staffs do because I know when Britt Prince tweaked her foot. Training staff was uh, working on that, taping it up, and she was back in the game in a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. Cora Olson for Millard South, Yes, I think tweaked her ankle late in the first half, and she was back out there in the second half. And they, uh, I don't know if they win without one of the big three out there, and now you just mentioned Dotzler. So we'll see. Uh, they're going to need him. I mean, yep. um, They'll need everybody to get this title, and nobody's going to hand it to them. No, no, and it's it's been since Omaha Central in 2011 that there's been an undefeated state champion. I'm foreseeing that it, this is going to be the next one, and it's going to come against da -da 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 -da, Miller North. Fourth time those teams will <laughs> have met in as many years for the championship if that occurs. Can Bellevue West get the bookends? They, they won the aforementioned a historic comeback, lost the next two, and then now with a, a, a team that has a lot of pressure being undefeated. Right. Can, can they can they finish it off against their their old uh, old friends from uh, out in West O? Well, the players' names change over the years too, and even one of the coaches with Tim Cannon retiring from Millard North. But uh, you know, if it comes out the way you 
think it might. Again, Bellevue West against Millard North, which is always a classic. Um, one team missing from Class A this year, Omaha Creighton Prep. But uh, it'd be strange not seeing the Junior Jays down there. First time in nine years they're not there. Wow. That was the longest active streak. In fact, going into the uh, NSAA records uh, this morning before the taping, there was no other active streak on there that had been five or more uh, through last year. So mm -hmm. you, you've got Auburn certainly is, has a, a five-year streak, and there may be one or two others. But uh, it, it takes a lot to continue to go to state every, every single year. It's so tough to do in Class A. Uh, once Prep lost at home to Lincoln Southeast, their only hope was that one wild card. And once Gretna got beat, they went the wild card and uh, the Dragons, as you'll talk actually, about. Actually, actually, the uh, Dragon game got done first. So yeah. those on the sidelines, and I was saying with um, two of Josh Lukey's protégés, uh, Kyle Thompson at Elkhorn and Andy King at Elkhorn North, they knew that uh, they had to win. That they had to win, and at that point, it was it was almost all but done. Yeah, that was. Uh, didn't play out that way in the girls' tournament. I mean, Millard West defeated Lincoln East. They were down about the seven and eight spot. Mm -hmm. But uh, a couple of those higher wild card points teams losing in uh, Class A kind of upset things a little yep. bit. But uh, and got three Lincoln schools to the state tourney for the first time in a while. Uh, that's going to be good for um, attendance mm -hmm. uh, down there. Lincoln East, uh, Lincoln Southeast, and Lincoln North Star. North Star staying in the eight hole. Can they pull off something like Bellevue West did to uh, Lincoln Southeast a while back, 2001, where number eight beat number one and uh, went uh, went on and advanced and uh, Southeast, who had only lost to Council Bluffs Abraham Lincoln during the season, out. Hmm. Well, like you said, uh, it's going to mean big crowds down there for yep. those games. The Lincoln fans will come out in force and. We love all the bands in the state, but the Lincoln Southeast Band is uh, always one of my favorites, and they'll be back for the first time in a long time. They will be back, and uh, Bellevue West, which uh, had other obligations last week, I found out on that Friday night, um, they'll be back in. I thought the bands overall last week, A, all the way down. I thought <laughs> some great music. And um, I thought the smaller schools, some of their bands had really improved. And part of it is that the NSAA is granting free admission now, first time for uh, bands and cheerleaders and drill teams, something I've advocated for a long time, in, in part because you get those parents and those grandparents wanting to see their family members perform, that's bringing extra income in for the NSAA. You give a little to get a little. And I think it's a great move by the NSAA and I, I think we saw it in, in how the the bands were uh, treated and, and reacted mm -hmm. last week. I'd agree with that. You know, they're not playing but per se, but uh, having the band, cheerleaders, that whole atmosphere adds so much to a game. So You mean instead of canned music of Sweet Caroline? Yeah, sounds so much better live. Yes, it does. And, and any band in the state this week is welcome to play Sweet Caroline at Pinnacle Bank when they see Mike Patterson. Because or welcome not to play it. <laughs> no, no, it's my tourney. I, I guess say who gets to play Sweet Caroline. All right, play whatever you want. <laughs> so for Mike Patterson, I'm Stu Pospisil, and we'll be back next time with a uh, recap of the Boy State Tournament. Thanks for watching.